Hey everyone, Steve here from My Crypto World. Welcome back to another quick episode. Today we're going to have a look at three news articles, one regarding Bitcoin, the other regarding Cardano, and the final one regarding some comments made by Ripple's CEO. All that after this. Okay, let's get into it, guys. So uh, the first article, as I mentioned, is regarding Bitcoin. Um, now, we spoke about a couple of days ago how Bitcoin has come up to its previous resistance level. It looks uh, like it's got a lot of strength in the coin itself. This article is just related to that, just saying that Bitcoin is at the 20K mark. It's actually at about 23, uh, but it is creating new support levels. This is an article from uh, Glassnode. The latest analysts by Glassnode suggests that the world's uh, the worst of the sell-off, sorry, could be concluded, but the market still needs time to recover. Again, I did talk about this a couple of uh, days ago, but it's really good to see other articles out there that highlight the same, um, I guess, story in a, in a sense. Uh, extreme demand at the $20,000 price point for Bitcoin appears to have forced the coins back into the hands of investors who care less about the price while creating a new realized price level. Now, just on that point there, what really the article is insinuating is that while the price for many people is really important, and it's probably the most number one metric that people look at uh, on a cryptocurrency status is the price of the coin. So re regardless if it's a layer one, layer two, or a layer three crypto, price is everything for most people because they've put their hard-earned money into it. However, when um, markets around the world tumble or fall, while it represents good buying opportunity, um, it also you also get a lot of investors coming back into the market who have faith in the actual underlying project itself. So that's really what it's insinuating there, that while the investors, they care less about the price, while creating a new realized price level. So they're, they're really interested in the actual technology itself and where it might be in the future. And of course, price is important to them because they're getting it at a bargain price compared to where it was you know, six, 12 months ago. Um, but they still have faith that the, the value of the company um, and the project is strong. The Glassnode analyst noted that much of the supply that the new short-term holders bought, so STH is short-term holders bought, during that drawdown has not been sold, even though prices are significantly down. So people, even short-term holders of Bitcoin, are hanging on to it longer than they had previously. This may be due to the less price-sensitive buyers or those who care more about Bitcoin fundamentals than the investment gains which drives demand. Uh, Glassnode wrote that this suggests that newly minted short-term holders are price insensitive buyers with more confidence in Bitcoin, adding that their conversion from a short-term to a long-term holder who does not sell for at least 155 days would help confirm this. In this current bear market, confirmed long-term holders have locked in nearly 400 days of straight yearly profitability, performing better than the 30-day profitability. This is nearly the same duration that long-term holders experienced during the 2028 bear market. Glassnode wrote that it suggests losses are being locked in by long-term holders, which, if the previous argument holds, means that the new buyers have less price sensitivity than the cohort who sold. So in other words, the long-term buyers who have been into this market for a while and they've experienced so much pain, uh, they've made uh, so many losses, or they've bought just at the wrong time of the, uh, of the cycle, they're out and the new people who are buying in at the moment are tending to hang on to the Bitcoin for a lot longer, which means they're not really affected by price as much or they really don't care. They just want to hold the asset long term. So we're getting a lot of people who are going from short term holders into long term uh, investors. Uh, so the article, sorry, does wrap that up by saying that, uh, that if the previous argument ho uh, holds true, that means the new buyers have less price sensitivity than the cohort th that sold, meaning they could become the newest group of long-term holders. The report concludes by stating that while the worst of the capitulation may be over. So interesting article uh, from a different perspective there. Um, I actually hadn't thought much about the long-term holders versus short-term holders before. Um, so that gives an interesting insight into what's going on there. The next article is regarding Cardano. Um, 
Cardano generates weekly bullish divergence for the second time in history. So pretty interesting here. Uh, Cardano ADA broke out from the 307 day descending resistance line after both the weekly and da daily RSI generated bullish divergence. Uh, ADA has been decreasing since the all new time high of $3.10 back in September 2021. The downward movement so far has led to a low of 40 cents in May 2022. And the price has increased slightly but is still trading at 47 cents measuring from the all time high which gives the price decrease of an 85% decrease. But the most interesting reading comes from the weekly RSI which has generated a bullish divergence the only other time the weekly RSI generated bullish divergence was in December 2019, and that led to an upward movement of 135%. Uh, the, whoops, sorry about that. The long-term breakout. So similar to the weekly chart, the daily one provides a bullish outlook. The main reason for this is the price has broken out from a descending resistance line that has been in place for 307 days. Breakouts from such long-term structures are usually a sign that the preceding trend is complete. Now we have spoken about this as well on the channel. We've spoken about it more from a sense of a sideways movement. The longer the sideways movement goes and we get a breakout on the upside of that, the stronger that breakout tends to be. But the same thing applies to long-term downtrends and long-term uptrends as well. Uh, when it's in place for a long time and there's a breakout, the breakout tends to be more dramatic. So again, let's just wait and see what that looks like for us as investors and or traders in the uh, Cardano sphere. Now finally, Ripple, as you all know, I've covered this off a number of times on the channel in previous articles. Uh, Ripple is going through a lawsuit at the moment where they're fighting the SEC for um, clarity around what they want to do or what, how they want to be classed, whether they're going to be classed as an asset. Um, or a commodity or whatever else, whatever the SEC want to do and how they want to do that. Um, and this article came out uh, last week. I didn't pick up on it actually, I've only just seen it now. So it goes on to say that the Ripple CEO, Brett Garlinghouse discussed the lawsuit brought by the US Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. Uh, for those that are in Australia, that would be something like ASIC or the ASX. Uh, over XRP earlier this month in an interview with uh, Axios, at the Coalition 2022 event. The SEC sued Ripple Labs Garlinghouse and the co-founder Chris Larson in December 2020, alleging that SRP sale was an unregistered securities offering. Ripple disagreed with the SEC and has since been filing a legal battle with the securities regulator. During an interview, Garlinghouse was asked what would happen if he does not get the ruling in his favor and XRP is deemed a security. Now, his answer is spot on. The Ripple executive quickly emphasized that in that situation, XRP would be only considered security in the United States. So that gives us clarity as well. So XRP is being used at the moment around the world um, in multiple, multiple countries. And it's really only the Americans that are uh, saying that uh, SEC, uh, sorry, the SEC in America is saying that um, uh, the XRP is a security offering. No other country has come out and said this so far. And he says in quotes, the SEC only has jurisdiction in the United States and in some ways, how the world is operating right now is as if the case has been lost. So while the, the market has continued to rally behind XRP and the adoption is still happening, the price movement doesn't reflect that at the moment, probably because everyone's on tender hooks and they just wanna see what the ruling's going to be. If Ripple loses a case, uh, does anything change? Basically, it's just status quo. Ripple is still growing very, very quickly, Garlinghouse said, emphasizing that he's betting that Ripple will win the case against the securities regulator. The executive affirmed, I'm betting that because I think the facts are on our side and I'm betting that because the law is on our side. So again, he's super, super confident that uh, XRP will be the winners of this long drawn out battle. Um, and they're now saying that the battle may uh, complete in 2023 um, I mean, who knows where it's going to go. I said 18 months ago it was going to be over in early 2022, but um, that has not been the case at all. So these things, as you know, do take a lot longer than expected, and they also cost 10 times more than what they were originally uh, expecting as well. But, you know, well, Ripple can afford it, so um, I'm sure things will work out uh, in their favour. 
Uh, that's it for today's news articles. Take care of yourself. If you can hit like and subscribe, if you like the channel, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. It'll really help the channel grow. If you don't like the channel, just put your comments below on what you'd like to see covered and I'll try and get that done um, for you in the next couple of videos. Uh, until we see you in the next one, take care of yourselves. Cheers.